Well, hey there, idiots. Welcome back to Observe. In today's video, we're going to be doing a full analysis on Nicole Kessinger. Now, I've already done this partially as a collaboration with Jordan over at The Art of Deduction, but a lot of you politely requested that I do it myself in my normal format and to the full extent of the entire interview. I am happy to oblige. However, since this is true crime, most of these videos don't end up getting monetized, so if you would like to make more of these videos possible, please follow the links in the description below. If you're also interested in the backstory for this video specifically, I have already done that over at the Chris Watts video. That will be linked in the description as well. But that's enough small talk. Let's get moving. All right, so this first part that we're gonna be looking at is going to be more or less establishing a baseline for Nicole. Now, this isn't going to be a perfect baseline because she's still under a fair amount of stress. This is an interrogation or interview, and she's also pretty tired. However, this is the only footage that I could find that would provide at least a semi-reliable, non-verbal baseline for the rest of the reading. Notice her tone, body language, and mannerisms during this entire first segment here. So it's, when you go through the text messages, Tammy and probably Stacy will be there. Okay. So you guys know each other. Okay. Um, or if they reach out to you, you, you know that they're not the media. Yeah. <laughs> Can you give me your card? Yeah. Really, okay. I got everyone. Okay. I just, Thank and you. now with this new phone, it's like I got so many numbers that I, I'm sure I can figure so, out what they are. But I need to just deal with that. Like if you guys can help me get all of my contacts from this phone. To so I can get a tech guy maybe to help help me? Because I'm not at it too. gave me instructions. So though. this is your old phone? This is the one that I use for communication. This is the one that's going to be good. Okay. This one. So if you notice the tone that she has in her voice, it has a specifically casual timbre to it. There's not any stress to it so much so. However, an interesting thing to point out is that even at the point where she's saying, and they gave me instructions, her pitch raises up a fair bit, and that is common in points of stress. Now, as we continue to watch this, we learn that she's stressed about getting everything switched over on her phones because it's a stressful thing to do. So that pitch fluctuation is a fairly good tell for an indicator of a stressor in her nonverbal baseline. So if we hear that pitch spike up again, that should be a red flag for us. I'll give you a hint. It does this. It does this later on in the interview at some interesting points. But as you can hear from the rest of her tone, everything sounds pretty normal and her body language is relaxed, albeit a little bit stressed due to the nature of her settings and her surroundings and what is going on around her. Let's keep watching. This is nicer. I know. <laughs> iPhones suck. I'm kind of I know. relieved to have this. Back. Okay, so you're gonna you want to move contacts from there to there. That's all I want to do. Once you guys do that, then you guys can have this phone. I mean, he gave me a, a way to do it, so I think I need to connect to Wi-Fi, and then I need to download this app, and then I think once I download it, I can sync it up. And I need to just download the app on both phones. So let me get a guy who knows about Wi-Fi. Is your Password still 653038? Yeah, that hasn't changed. So that's going to be that one. Yeah. And which which one is getting all the new text messages? Your new phone? Mm -hmm. I've only got a few. And then, like, now I get what you're saying. Like, they're out of order. Once again, another pitch change there. I only got a few higher pitch point of stress. This is reaffirming that that higher pitch is an indicator for a point of stress. Now, we know as we continue throughout the rest of the analysis to look out for those pitch changes as points of stress. They're scrambled, they're missing. They don't make sense. I got super excited when I saw them because I was like, maybe it'll be all of them, but it's not. So <clears throat> maybe what I'll ask, we have I will say that that part where she's saying, maybe it'll be all of them, but it's not. It has a higher pitch to it, but it's not that same tone. If you notice the difference between it, it's her doing the classic recollection voice. A lot of people will actually verbally recall thoughts in their heads in a higher voice or a different voice than their normal voice. This isn't out of the ordinary. So this isn't a point of stress so much as it's just her recalling, but you can tell that tone difference between the high pitch of stress and this high pitch of recollection. 
device, but maybe we can download that too. This one too? All right. I mean, I don't know if that'll work, but we can try it. Here's yeah. mine. Thank you for yours. Thank you. And then Kevin knows how to get a hold of us after hours and then I'm going to do that too. So I appreciate that. that. I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, okay. Are okay. you giving her a spare phone? Is that she what has her own spare phone, but when she linked her accounts, a bunch of messages between her and Chris were recovered on her new phone. Oh, okay. So I'm going to probably just celebrate right now. Oh, okay. On, on our new phone, so we don't have to take all our phones. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. Are okay. you good in here for a bit? Okay. Do you have some water or anything? Please. Okay. All right, so that's going to be more or less the baseline that I get to work with for this read. Once again, it's not a super astoundingly great one, but it's better than no baseline at all. I would like to have a perfect world where she is perfectly relaxed and I can really establish where she is at non-verbally for her baseline, but this is going to have to do for now. That tone, that conversive casual tone, and noticing those high-pitched spikes during points of stress. That's what we got from that first segment. We're going to continue in from here where we start seeing some more signs of stress. So your phone this time, do you have any objections to us looking at everything in your phone? Why do you even need that? I'm just curious. Like, why do you need everything as opposed to stuff? So, so once again, there's that high pitched stress indicator. He asks, are you okay with us having your phone? And she answers with a question. Why do you even need that? And it's that high pitched tonal spike that we know is an indicator of stress for Nicole. So there's something that she doesn't like about giving her information over to the police. Now, this is to be expected. Anybody who has anybody go through their phone, regardless of if there's anything to hide or not, is just uncomfortable. So it's not unexpected that she's not really interested in this, but it's also still a point of interest and a red flag that I'm going to keep in the back of my head as I continue to read. Well, because it's easier to get it. And if we're looking at all the material, let's say I take everything off your phone, I can put a date in, like let's say August 10th through the 15th, because those are... Now, she said that she was thirsty earlier. She takes a swig here. Once again, this could just be a swig of water without any real repercussions. However, it is still interesting that this swig of water is taken during this point of stress. She just got stressed about needing to hand her phone across, and now she's leaning back and taking a swig of water. Now, you could take a swig of water just because you're thirsty, but you could also take a swig of water because your mouth is dry because you're nervous. This is another thing that I'm just keeping my eye on and keeping in the back of my mind as I continue forward with the rest of the analysis. Critical days, but other conversations between you and Chris or other text messages between you and Chris from uh, June or July, then it makes it harder for me to find all those. Do you understand what I mean? It's easier it for them to just take number, everything. Right? I don't know. Are they? Yeah. I mean, except for when I first met him, and it was his APC thing. Okay. And but then what about uh, your phone log? It's always his 9 yeah, zero number. number. All the time. All right. Like it's and always that we, one or originally it was his. We talked about your GPS. So she does a no shake while talking about this, which some could see as a, it hasn't been that same thing all the way around. However, the rest of her body language, if you consider it all in context, that no shake is less likely to mean deceit rather than just that's the way she moved her head during that sentence. The rest of her tone stayed the same. The rest of her body language stayed the same. There were no other nonverbal spikes to indicate that that could be a point of deceit. I believe that his phone number did indeed stay the same all the way through, judging by her body language. Uh, looking like knowing where your phone is yeah. at certain times. I mean, you guys can have all that. I just was like, oh my god, so many texts on here between me and all my friends. I'm like, do they really want all this stuff? Well, is there anything? A little bit more of that higher pitch point, but as a recollection rather than a stressor, you could hear the tonal differences. So this isn't a point of deceit. This is just a point of recollection. In those texts that you'd be concerned with. Not really. So. Well, not really your yes or no. No, I mean, like, I, the other day, my dad and I just had to do... Interesting. This part here. So he asks an important question. He asks, is there anything more or less that's going to be incriminating for her? And she says, not really. And that is an answer without answering. It's trying to kind of weasel around it. That's why he re-asks, is, is it not really or is it not at all? And she has this pitch aggression increase. And then she leans back like this, which is really interesting. It's a weird cluster of nonverbal communication here. A weird cluster of spikes 
that's happening. If I were in the room with this gentleman, I would see that as a pretty noticeable red flag that in fact there likely were things on that phone that have been hidden but right now there's not enough to be able to say that for certain we have to continue analyzing damage control because a lot of people were like hey please call me i don't know what to say and i just told them all like i didn't say anything i pretty much just said if media trust contact you tell them no comment it's like please be nice to them do not need to talk to them. She's really uncomfortable recalling this. Her body language is showing a lot of anxiety and nerves in this entire monologue that she's giving to this guy right now. She's got a lot of strain across her legs as she's pushing her body off of the chair. She's really leaning back. She's doing a whole lot of very odd stuff that wasn't there before. This is called a nonverbal spike. This would be considered a positive nonverbal spike. And what I mean by positive nonverbal spike is that where there was no no action before, at a point of possible interest, there was a large portion of nonverbal action. It's a red flag to a nonverbal analyst when they see something like this. Something's fishy about this entire recollection and story that she's telling. It's like, I'm safe, I'm not in trouble, I'm in breaking laws, and I was just like, just send your love and support, and that was all I said to people. So did that prompt all the phone calls of people going, no, are you okay? they were prompting me. Right. That is why I did that, because I didn't even want to, like, say that, but I was getting all sorts of texts from people that were like, me is trying to contact me, I don't know what to do. I didn't tell them that I was a witness, I didn't. So you heard that spike again pitch-wise, but you hear the difference, it's the recollection or reenactment tone that people take. I don't think that part was a lie. However, as everything else is showing here, I do feel like there is some reason for her to really not want them to have her phone. It would seem incriminating for her to be like, no, don't take my phone, I don't want you to see it. So she's kind of being strong-handed into releasing this. I don't know if they found any information on the phone yet, but from what I see, there's something fishy that's going on there. Tell them anything about that. It was just like, just say no comment, I need you to do this. Okay. And then a couple of my like super, super close friends, I asked them if they would be courteous enough to take all the pictures that we had of each other off Facebook and social media, and they said yes, and that was like a couple of really close friends. Is there any text messages between you and friends that reference anything that would... So this sort of gesture that she does here, this is a self-soothing gesture. People who are stressed will do this sort of thing. It could take form in various different ways. It could be this fixing sort of deal or hair rubbing, head rubbing. It's a self soothing gesture. There are some that say, well, think back to when you were a baby, how your guardian would stroke your hair to be able to calm you down. It's still a subconscious thing that we'll do today to this day as adults to be able to help calm ourselves down. She's recollecting a stressful thing that she had to do. That makes sense in there as well. Be concerning regarding this case. No. Like talking about Chris. I think you've told me that you've never even really talked with my friends about him. No, and like my friend's dad died last night, like yesterday. I'm not worried about that. No, I know, but she started like, oh my god, she was really drunk last night. She started like freaking out. She's like, I don't know what's going on in your life. She's like, I don't know if it pertains to this case. And she like just sent me like a screenshot of a news article of that case. And she was just like, so she's like, what about conversation? I, I didn't mention that it had anything to do with that. She's like, I don't know if that's what it is. He works in the dark ghost. She's like, I really don't give a shit. She's like, I just really need you to be here with me and my dad and this and this and this. And she was just kind of upset because I had asked her um, to please say no comments in the media. And it happened to be like right when her dad died. And I think she was feeling a little like, yeah, but I mean, you guys can read this. There's nothing in there of me actually saying anything about it. I just told What's her your phone number on that phone? So she's still showing a lot of nonverbal spikes during this point with nervous gestures, placating gestures, needless moves of things. Like if you watch her, she literally moves a water bottle without a reason. There's no point to it. There's just a lot of nervous activity while recalling this. I'm betting, I don't know, but I'm betting she's concerned that this friend could be a problematic point, maybe talking about stuff to people. Maybe this friend runs with their mouth a fair bit. Regardless, she's talking to the police about if she shared anything about the case and then when she's talking about this friend she's acting really nervous so she might be worried that this friend is going to talk however it's also interesting that she quickly tries to 
divert attention from the question that the interrogator originally asked so quickly with a story about this friend. This is very suspicious to me. All sorts of verbal and non-verbal red flags that are giving me an uneasy feeling in my gut about this. And all of this is something that I'm keeping in mind as the read continues. Zero, this is Saint Tomorrow on this one. Six five six nine six zero five. So no, I mean you guys can you guys can. Look so at this. between, there was a conversation that I asked you about between you and Charlotte. Too. That's the same girl. That same girl was freaking out. Yeah. So was there ever a conversation about kids with you? That gesture, just real quick, this one, it looked like she was actually rubbing her eye rather than doing this gesture that she was doing earlier. This is part of the thing where I was saying she's very tired in this, so that's kind of making it difficult to use her baseline with complete confidence. This is one of those nonverbal signs that she's tired. You and Charlotte, like, you... I can't remember the exact context, but... I guess we're talking... hanging out with a guy who had kids. Okay. And um, what? She has not even, like... Played. All right, so this little portion of the interview that we just watched really was showing Nicole having agitation and nerves and stress around the idea of handing her phone over and this friend. Those are two points that I see red flags from her as stressors. We're going to start seeing Nicole's stress rising in other areas and how it shows itself as well. All right. So your conversation about him having kids, how did that go? I mean, I just told her, shh, uh, is it still, kids. did you yeah, delete yeah, that or is it no, still no, no, I have no, I, I have no reason to delete anything else in my phone. Okay. The reason I deleted all this stuff with Chris is because he was making me feel really uncomfortable and I didn't want to see it in my phone anymore. Okay. Um, so right off the bat, when he asked the question, she does a mouth blocking gesture. And then she also has a pitch spike afterwards when she's saying, however, it doesn't have that same tone that we heard from before at the stressor points, but it does seem similar to that. That's something that I'm keeping in mind. And then she starts doing some verbal stuttering whenever he asks this important question that could be seen as her processing, trying to come up with a lie kind of thing, or it could just be her finding the right words that she wants to be able to use while talking. It's something that a lot of people will do, especially if they're nervous is stumble over their words. So it could be a sign of nerves for deceit, or it could just be a sign of your normal everyday average nerves that you would see in a police investigation or interrogation. Um, yeah, let me scroll all the way back here. We're gonna scroll talk a lot. No, she is like... So let's just, while well, we're here, because we talked about this before, but we didn't talk about the specific context of what that message said regarding the children. So obviously, in the situation that we're looking at now with uh, the death of two children and all the other circumstantial stuff going around in the case. All right, so we can see another sign of stress from Nicole in verbal stuttering. As I said before, this is something that shows up commonly in nerves for just about everyone. If you're nervous, you'll probably stumble verbally. So she's nervous here. It's just a matter of telling why she's nervous. Is it because of deceit or is it just because she's in the situation that she's in? You, I just want to make sure there was no comments ever made by you regarding, you know, children or dislike of children or love of children. Either way. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, I guess. Let me find it. Start. You guys can just take whatever you want. So it, it's easier for me to just take everything than it is to single it out. Plus, for the purposes of this case, the less exposure, you know, we're, we already have a, initially you drew concern from me when you told me you deleted everything from Chris. I've already told you that. You understand why? There's no question as to why that might cause concern. So if there's anything else that ever comes up, I have it, and then we can just discuss it. Okay. All right. 
So I'm going to talk about something tonally and non-verbally that happens during this question. If there's anything talking about whether or not you like kids, these are very important questions that he's asking and her response is not matching the intensity of the question. And she doesn't really answer. And when she does answer, her pitch is much more low and airy. This is a spike from her normal baseline, from what we heard earlier in her conversational tone before. This is a spike, so we have to take note of that. Along with that, if you look at how she's facing, she's not facing directly at him. She's facing lightly away, and she's put up this arm. Now, she's masking it as a leaning on the head, so all of this could be read as maybe she's just really tired. It's a possibility. She is tired. This could be the way it's playing out. However, I just find it odd that in this sort of situation with this sort of questioning, she's not regarding it in such a way that it kind of deserves. If somebody is asking you if you wanted kids or didn't want kids or liked kids or didn't like kids in regards to a case where you're dating a guy who did some terrible things in relation to his wife and kids, then I feel like it has to have some intensity or at least deserves some more attention than she's giving it. She's acting disinterested and she's throwing up this partial blocking gesture as well. So this is a red flag for me as well. So far, every time that he's brought up anything about Chris and anything about the relationship that she might have with the kids, she's been doing some odd nonverbal behavior. This isn't turning out super well for Kessinger's innocence in my opinion so far, but we have to be able to try to keep an open mind as we continue forward because there's the possibility that she is indeed innocent. Right now, I'm not feeling that. Also, I have to apologize. This footage becomes desynced. You'll notice that. I noticed it. I just didn't really want to go and try to resync it. I'm not going to explain myself anymore. We're going to keep watching. Starts. Right there. She starts talking about her and her fiance. So that was like weeks ago. And she hasn't brought it up since really or like connected the dots or like said shit. I mean, you guys can look through all those texts. Oh boy. All right. So a lot of blocking gestures here. A lot of spacing, blocking gestures going on as she actually hands her phone over. She leans back, crosses her arms. This is creating space and it's also creating a barrier. She also does this. She blocks her face. These are all blocking gestures. Now they could be partially explained and what I feel like she would likely explain it as is as tiredness. However, it's just odd that it's happening right now when she hands the phone physically to the person who's doing the interviewing or interrogating. This is a red flag again. Nicole is not happy about having to hand over her phone. There's something that's going on on there, whether it's related to Chris, whether it's related to anything else, I'm not sure, but she doesn't want to give her phone over. Let's keep watching. And I don't know when that was. That was definitely when things were going good. So this is like, weeks prior i'm just assuming i think the day is at the top of whenever we started texting that day okay. look this is we talk a lot august 7th yeah so i re reference everything to sunday the 12th so that's the only conversation like that on there i believe on my phone there's like anything else and she even last night like still wasn't even she's so all right so something that sticks out to me is the lack of synchronization between the interviewer or interrogator and Nicole, as things are going on, you would hope to see maybe a little bit of mirroring in their body language. He does some mirroring of her, whether or not that's intentional or not is another question. However, she does none towards him. This just indicates that they're not in sync together. They are very, very out of sync as two people. If you see somebody who is mirroring another person or vice versa, or they are mirroring each other, that means that they are in sync with each other and you don't see that here. While that's not an incriminating tale, it is something to know 
note that she doesn't feel in sync with this person, whether that's because she doesn't feel like he's really there to help her, or because she's hiding something and trying to be deceitful, or because she's just so tired that she's not really with it enough to reciprocate body language like this. Any of those could be reasons, but it is something that I am still keeping note of as I do the analysis. What do you mean by can tell he has a lot to take care of in life? What did you mean when you said that? He has a mortgage and he has kids. Okay. And responsibilities. I mean, he's a father of a house. You're even saying in here he's all about his kids. Yeah. And she was like asking me somewhere in there, like, I mean, everything I had to say about him at that point was like really positive. So she's talking very soft in this point. Now the question is, is this the same tonal spike that we noticed earlier where she randomly dropped pitch and lost interest and all these sorts of things? Or is this because she's tired? I'm not positive. Both of them could be because she's tired. Both of them could be because she's lying. It is still interesting that he asks an important question centered around Chris and she uses this tone again and it's once again kind of centered around the kids this tone and the kids show up multiple times from what her body language is presenting she isn't a big fan of the kids or at least there's something suspicious going on centered around that let's keep watching to see if that actually comes to fruition like i think i made it clear that i wasn't like 100 percent sure this was like the man of my dreams and i was going to spend the rest of my life with him or anything but i was enjoying the time that i was spending with him at that point. You're referencing that he has two kids and then <clears throat> you don't like that um, because you want to have that experience with somebody else? Is that what I just thought was? I wasn't sure if he was the one that I want to be with because he had already like done everything. Okay. Like I was like it would be really nice to kind of like have kids and have my own marriage and all of that stuff. That was never anything I conveyed to him. That was interesting. Was it not? That that was interesting. So she says that she enjoys spending time with Chris. She admits that. She said that she enjoyed it at that time. That was something that she loved. She never mentioned that she appreciated being around the kids. Also interesting. And then she says in her texts that he has kids and she says that she doesn't like that he's done everything, has kids. And she then gives the explanation in a very stilted, broken form that she doesn't like it because she kind of wants to have kids hits you know and it does this pitch increase and it's all broken apart i don't believe that that's the reason that she didn't like that chris had kids i just don't think she wants kids and i don't think that she was wanting to have kids i think she just wanted kids out of the picture maybe down the road she wanted kids but right now she wasn't interested in it she wasn't interested in chris having kids that's not good news and i get it i get it kids aren't for all people so i get that but in this situation that's not good news for her not because she doesn't want kids but because of what happened if you take my meaning. But, but, without further ado, that's all that I've got for the day. My name is Logan, and you have been oh so awesome as you always are. And I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.